Alrighty. We are back. Make an announcement on Discord and we will start working here. Howdy, beautiful Bart, and welcome back. Alright, so what we left off on this guy here, and I'm going to go ahead and hit play and just jump right straight in. I don't like that spawn location, so we're going to end up having to change that one around. But what I did was I created a spawn location, 10 of them randomly around the map, and for each one I went ahead and added in a rifle. And you see, we can run around, we can jump, we can do everything as normal. And as soon as you pick up the weapon and it puts us into a first-person mode. However, do notice if you're aiming straight down, you can possibly shoot yourself, and you're dead. So, yeah, that's something I'm going to have to look into. Um, and another thing also is, once you've already picked up the rifle, uh, I noticed that uh, you can actually walk over and pick up another rifle. So, we want to make it to where, if you already have the rifle, you cannot pick up the same rifle again. Um, that's just a kind of a courtesy thing, so you don't run around the map and say, hey, I don't want him getting that gun. Screw you. And I just run over and pick it up, and it's gone. So that's another thing I want to go ahead and, and get fixed. Um, you guys need to let me know what you think about forcing it into uh, first-person mode, or should we change it to where it's a um, selectable? So one way or the other, you have a choice, or you're just kind of forced into um, that mode. I said with this spawn, I wasn't happy with the way it was sitting, so I'm going to go ahead and just move it over here and put it on the ground because it was interfering with the roof of this uh, this building right here, which is weird. These characters are made for this map, and his head won't clear that. It's kind of odd, but we don't have working ladders yet. It's something to address later. So I'm going to fly back over here to the same area where I was started at before, and from there I'll go ahead and we will go ahead and fix the rifle first, so that um, if you already have one, then you can't pick it up. That's going to be a quick fix. So, with that, we're going to go ahead and save all so we can save our map, since we did actually make a change to it this time. And in our player blueprints, we're going to come into player underscore base and to our event graph. We've got all these lovely things piled up over here. So, rifle picked up. Let's look inside this one. So, whenever we pick up the rifle, what happens is it will say, okay, you picked up the rifle, you now own it, so it'll set your animation class. And if you don't own the rifle, then it will set you back into the regular unarmed, regular walk around. So we might be able to use that for something else later too. But it also creates the crosshair when you actually have the rifle. So what we need to do is we need to tell it to not pick up the rifle. Let's actually look at the pickup. So we'll look in the Assets folder, Pickups, and Rifle Pickup. So it's setting it right here. What we need to do is we need to move this out a little bit. And then as player base, we need to ask it if we already own it. Get Rifle 1 owned, and we're going to need to run a branch. So we'll run that to here, and to here, and if it is true, we want to do nothing. If it is false, then we want to go ahead and pick up the rifle, or, or just set it to the fact that we own it now. 
because the fact of owning it is what actually spawns it in for us. So, in theory now, if we try to walk over and pick up another one of those rifles, it's not going to work. So, I'm going to throw a second one out right here. And, of course, since I'm doing this, it will spawn me in a different location. So, I'm going to right-click on the map. And play from here so that I know that I'm not going to spawn somewhere else on the map. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the rifle. I got it. It works. I'm going to walk over this one and it will not let me pick it up now because I already have one. Cool. And we've got our health potions that are sitting here and it's also working to where if we already have one we can't pick it up. So that's cool. But we probably need to put some health potions elsewhere in the map just in case. Because after I make a few tweaks to this game, I'm going to upload the current version of it at that point. And we're going to want to try to get some people together and play. You need to go away. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop one right over here. I'll drop one up here. Just put them in some random locations around the different islands so that we know that if we look, we're going to find something. Now, besides the um, the coins uh, that we want to do also, there's so many things that I want to add to this project that, you know, if you guys got ideas of what you want to see, please let me know. Because, honestly, there's just so many things we can do. Now, keep in mind also, this project is not just going to be pirates and if you've already downloaded a copy of this game to test it out and play around with it then you've noticed that the name is COG C-O-G and that is the name of my main project that we're we're establishing and what COG is is Center of Gravity and that is the name of the game that I am going to be publishing and putting onto Steam Good or bad, you know, better or worse, whatever. But that's the name of it. And the whole principle behind the game, well, first off, for people who are on the development team, anybody who is active in working on this project, then you'll have access to the core. And once the core is completed, then you'll be able to use my core system to work on your game. So I'm sharing my, my resources and what I'm doing and other people on the team are sharing their stuff as well so that we can create a game that will be interesting to play but then again it's building the core so you know the developers have the option on this team you can either build your stuff include it into my game as DLC so once it's on Steam people will be able to purchase the DLC and they will get all of the money from the sale of the DLC. However, if they just want to publish their own game based off of this stuff, then they can do that as well. So that's just an option. So I'm just about done here. I just want to place a couple of these things around the map just so that they are there. Because as far as I can tell, since you can shoot yourself, um, <laughs> you know, damage seems to be working, but death does not. So let's actually go back into our players since we got enough of these health potions around just for now. Plus, you have health regen, so that, that's okay as well. In the player, we got all this stuff going on here. Um, so, what I'm going to want to do is look at the viewport and my projectile spawner. And I'm going to go ahead and uncheck real time. And I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to bring him out just a little bit more. And you want to be a pain in the ass. Seriously, I'm just clicking right there. Zero, zero, zero. I'm trying to move one axis and it's trying to move all axis. I don't want to move all axes. So I'm going to move the projectile spawner out a little bit and that's going to actually we'll make it at 
150 by 0 by 0 so it stays in line with the camera and with our crosshair but it moves it out a little bit that should prevent you from being able to shoot yourself hopefully um, and let's go ahead and save all again just so we save the uh, the placement of all those lowly uh, health things and now when we hit play grab a rifle we're still shooting ourselves. So that wasn't obviously the issue. So let's actually pause them again. And since that wasn't the issue, then I'm going to change this X location back to 50. And then tell them to go back to moving again. So if that wasn't the issue, then I'll have to come up with another idea. That was the, the thought that I had earlier, but I wanted to work on this project, or this part of it at least, only during the, the, the stream. So, that being said, we need to look into a way of not just shooting the gun, but I need to be able to put that gun away. Because in our spawn rifle, okay, we spawn it, and it's there. Um there's a couple ways we can actually go about this now one thing that we can do is and I don't like doing it this way but it works is to actually add the weapon in right now but because I'm not in the correct animation it may not look right but then what we can do just like we did with our camera for switching from our primary to our aim down sight or our hip fire camera um, we can do the same thing. We can actually activate and deactivate it, it showing or changing the visibility level of it. So just like in here, when we look at um, deactivating the camera and activating another camera, we can actually do the same principle to hide the weapons. Because we want to start having more weapons. And we can do that by doing it this way as well by having a rifle, a pistol, a, uh, a sword and what have you already on the character and then we just activate it or deactivate it based on the locations and kind of show you how that actually works is I'm going to go back to the viewport I'm going to go to the mesh and then I'm going to go and find the rifle keep in mind again these guns are actually they're not skeletal meshes. These are static meshes. So we know that we're using the rifle 01. I have that selected. So now with mesh selected, add component, static mesh, and there it is. So with that selected, we can go ahead and attach it to the main hand. Okay, it's there, it's visible, and if I hit compile and save and if I were to go into the game now we're gonna have the rifle in our hands no matter what so now if I actually pick up a gun we actually have two it's showing both of them so the one that you're seeing here though doesn't actually function so what we're doing is we're when we're picking up the rifle we're changing our animations with this portion right here and we're changing our cameras so um, let's try something here and I'm just gonna put it at the end just to see if it'll actually work um, and we want to deactivate and it doesn't show up from there. Add event for the rifle. No, let's actually just do it manually. Let's do um, activate is not going to do it because it's it's still it's looking at the regular components we already had so let's try to 
set visibility to is visible. Actually, we want to do it the opposite way around here. Um, toggle visibility. Um, now we're going to go ahead and set visibility. And with that, what we're doing here is we are saying All right, we're going to set the visibility to positive. And now what we're going to do is we're going to select this rifle and we're going to make sure that it's hidden in game. Select that. And from that, let's actually go back to the other part, the weapon portion. And it's not actually in that one. It's actually going to be in the player. And we need to tell it where to spawn the rifle. And it's here. Spawn rifle. In fact, we can actually go ahead and... Since we put spawn rifle in here, I'm going to go ahead and just temporarily remove it. So when the rifle is picked up then we look in rifle pickup it's going to change the visibility to positive at that point so in theory if we were to play right now the rifle does not show up in our hands and we're in the correct animation now when we come down here it did not show up. fire still works but it didn't set the visibility correctly I don't, see, I don't see it there. Um, it is socketed to the main hand. And toggle visibility. Let's try another option here because right now we know that the gun is not visible in our hands. The firing stuff is is done right here in our blueprint our player blueprint, not in the weapon blueprint because it spawns a projectile from the actual um, player, not the actual weapon itself so toggle visibility and let's try that there's a propagate to children but we shouldn't need that just yet. So, okay, here we are. We're on the ship now. No weapon in our hands. And still no weapon in our hands. Alright, so that didn't work. So, we definitely need to at this point we need to get it to set the visibility because if we go back in here and uncheck hide in game it's still set to visible we can actually if we check uncheck visibility here or visible it just removes it from inside here so again if we look at it in game we have the rifle and it's there We pick it up and nothing changes, but we have to tell it to not be visible. Hidden in game. Well, let's try um, putting it somewhere else. And first off, let's go back to. Let's go ahead and create um, something else here. We've got um, spawn rifle is disabled. We can't run it in this part right here just yet. But where is our event begin play? That's here. 
temporarily we're going to run it off of event begin play set visibility of the rifle to unchecked here so that in theory should make it disappear and I guarantee that it won't just because okay it is not there and now when we walk over and pick it up that's when we need to go ahead and tell it to set visibility and let's see if it wants to cooperate this time so now if we set visibility and check this box control or compile and save and so now we have a rifle alright so that works I didn't want to have to attach it to event begin play to make sure that um, it's not there so when we start adding in other weapons we're gonna end up having to say oh my god no um, and hey Lex how you doing bud sorry I wasn't looking over there um, yeah it's a uh, part of the game is actually gonna be a pirate game but there's also gonna be modern there's gonna be knights there's gonna be ninjas there's gonna be all kind of different things but that's all selectable from the main menu portion of it and they actually the main menu is not a, a conventional menu system it's actually a lobby system so if you want to go play pirates you walk down to the dock and you launch out and you go to the the pirate game um, if you want to go into um, We'll say a, a World War II game. You walk down to the museum and or whatever and launch from there. So you launch from different areas of the map. You go to, you can launch into different games from there. So you actually have a 3D virtual menu that you could walk around and interact with other players and stuff like that. So, yeah. So we have a working musket. And we can make it appear and disappear now. That's all working. And we know that it does damage because, well, we can shoot ourselves, and I'll still have to work on fixing that. We have health regen, we have health potions, and I know there's some laying around here somewhere because I put one over here. I think you have to kind of walk around and look for things. And where did it go? I need some health. I'm dying over here. There we go. You've got a cool little sound when you pick up a health potion. So, being that this is a power game, we need some some swords we need some melee damage and attacks and we need um, other stuff as well but what do we have to work with um, let's look at our animation folder and currently we have rifles are configured and working I've got some swimming animations which I will activate um, the I've got to add all kind of different post processing and stuff like that to the water so that when you actually transition from land to water to a certain depth I would say then your character begins to swim if you stop swimming you'll tread water so I'll work on that here later on but let's look at what we can do for some other animations too I have four sword attacks and I'm thinking that next we should probably look into doing um, since we have the rifle we need to put the rifle away and go back to regular animations so that's what we should do next because I don't want to always be stuck with a rifle out of what if I want to pull my sword out um, so I'm thinking that we should use a series of keys one two three and four um, one being your primary weapon two being your secondary weapon three being your um, your melee weapon and four being a throwable item like grenades and yes we will have grenades um, so if we do one two three and four then we can actually by pressing a button we can change the different weapons um, and then from there I guess we could do five six seven eight nine and zero as like okay healing potion or you know whatever for inventory slots I, I guess um, so let's go ahead and first off configure our keys and we'll go to the editor project settings now Lex this is full multiplayer and this is um there will be some cooperative stuff in there and some single player stuff but this is all multiplayer um, I'll, I'll make this current version capable of playing um, 
if you scroll up in my public lobby in Discord, you'll actually find that there is a link to yesterday's version. You can get it and play it right now, and you can invite friends, and you guys can go play. It still has some of the bugs left over from it, but that was just a, you know, those two live streams that I did to build that game. Everything was done on screen. So, if you want to scroll up into my public lobby on Discord, you can find a link to it, share it with some of your friends. You guys can play it while I'm I'm doing this also. Or you can just keep watching this and learn how to do all these things. So I'm going to go to my input. Action mapping. And I'm going to go ahead and add one, two, three, and four. Even though I may not use them just yet. I'm going to do primary weapon. And we're going to use keyboard one and then for the next button we're going to do secondary weapon and we need to assign it to keyboard number two so now by hitting one two three and four we're going to be able to choose between our weapons and melee weapon Keyboard three. Not two, you jackass. I blame Lexmark for this. He let me do it. All right, so <laughs> um, we're going to call this one Throwables. And then I'm going to go ahead and tell it to be number four. So now we can hit one, two, three, and four and go through them. That's awesome. Lovely. Awesome. Um, so now we're going to um, So we got rifle owned is one of our variables. We're going to probably have to change the rifle owned variable to be can equip rifle zero one and we're going to end up having to probably do this for every one of the weapons if we do it this way um, there's going to be a better way um, I have not looked at um, Sea of Thieves I'm assuming from what I, I rec recall on that it was just uh, pirate ships but yeah there, there's, we will get the ships working we'll get the cannons working um, and of course you'll have muskets and sabers and, and stuff like that. So the pirate aspect of it, you're going to have all kind of different piratey things to do. So rifle owned is probably going to have to be changed to um, Candy Crip Rifle 01. And we're going to leave them the names that um, Cinti Studios named them so that it's easier for me to identify. So Rifle 01 owned and we've got that in our weapons section over here um, and we could change it here and it'll automatically change it in the rest of the blueprint but let's go ahead and let's just try something different really quickly to see if it works and then if it doesn't then we'll come back to it awesome yeah I think I've met Red Wings before uh, from your discord channel We're going to try just for the giggles of it. We're going to run, when we press the number one key for our primary weapon, we want to attempt to, hey Red Wings, how you doing bud? Toggle visibility of this. Since we're using the, the visibility aspect of it anyway, um, and this is, I'm just going to test this real quick. I know it's not going to change the animation back. Yeah, i got to blame you for something every now and then. <laughs> I know that this is not going to be correct. I know that whenever I pick up the gun, it works. No problem. I can shoot, and it's lovely. If I try to shoot too fast, it clicks, because I can't shoot that fast with a musket. So if I hit one... Of course it doesn't work, because I'm really engine 4. 
I wanted it to toggle the visibility to, to turn it back off. Um, toggle visibility. Oh, yeah, well, that should have worked though. Um, and for shits and grins, I'm actually going to go ahead and set Rifle Zero One owned to not. This is not the way that I want to do it. But again, just for testing purposes. So we'll grab the rifle. Rifle works. I cannot pick up the second one, so that's good. Hit the number one key. And, okay, it, it toggled it back. That's what I wanted to see. I can't shoot while I'm in this, but we need to get rid of the crosshair um, and change our camera back. So that's awesome. That worked. So it didn't work the way that I wanted it to in the other part. Um, because the other part of it was to tell it to utilize different animations and camera. And... I'm just going to go ahead and force it for right now. This is all going to change, so so bear with it. And I'm guessing for right now what I'll do is I'll just... I'll make one rifle, one pistol, one sword, and one grenade. And this will be the, the method of cycling through them for now. Um, let's um, change the animation instance. What's happening? I see you there. Um, yeah, you should be able to do um, an instant invite. But I'll go ahead and grab one really quickly. See if you can copy and paste and share that with them. So we're going to set our animation instance back to the normal, and shit. How do we do our crosshair? Crosshair was done in rifle pickup junk. So I'm going to go ahead and create another variable really quickly and show crosshair. There he is. So with the show cross here, I'm gonna move these guys over a little bit. I'm gonna complicate everything in here. I'm just gonna be all kind of weird. And then we can throw a branch in here. And we'll throw in throw cross here. So, yes, he can show the crosshair at this point, and it will show the crosshair. So that's good. We can make that work. And then we can go to the, let's compile and save. We can go into the widget. Yeah, guys, the, um, the, the demo that I uploaded from yesterday's build, that does work. The multiplayer does work. You can, you can log in and play. Um, I will actually make this version available as soon as we get done with it. So daily builds, if you check in, I'll post links to the, the updated version of it so you can check it out and play. So here I'm going to go from my favorite thing, event tick. hate doing it, but we need to cast who player underscore base, which again is our character, and I need to get player character reference here and yeah because I might want to do a, a test later on multiplayer to make sure that the shooting part is replicating correctly so as player base we want to um, what was the name of it uh, it was crosshair can show crosshair or show crosshair okay so we need to show 
show crosshair, we need to get a reference to that. If we can not, so I'm going to go ahead and throw in a branch. And if the answer is no, we are going to remove from parent. So this should, in theory, go ahead and get rid of our crosshair at that point. So let's go ahead and jump in here. All right, it's toggling our visibility in one way or the other. So that's going to be fine for now. Uh, it, all right, so we got to got to do uh, another variable check here because it's going to spawn it or or check one way or the other. So now if I walk over here and I pick up the rifle, its visibility is is backwards again. So I just got to make some changes to that. Just add some variables in here. But you can see we did get rid of our crosshair. We changed our animation instance back and made sure it was set. And what we did need to do also is change our camera. So camera changes in here. We're not changing the rifle owned. Not yet at least. So we press our primary weapon, we're setting or changing or toggling the visibility of the rifle. Um, we're setting the animation instance and we need to deactivate the ADS camera and then we need to activate the follow camera and we'll fix the actual visibility of the rifle here in just a second. We want to make sure that we're in the right views. Pick it up. It's supposed to set the visibility now. So it didn't change everything back the way I wanted to. We're on the follow camera, but oh, I know what it did. We didn't need this part at all because that was actually working. We needed to We look right over here in spawn rifle. Uh, no, that's not where I put it. Um, is it in has rifle? Rifle picked up. That was the crosshair. Um, so what I ended up doing was this right here set controller rotation yaw. So I need to copy that and we're going to paste that in here. But we need to also make sure that we're doing that here just in case. So we have full control back over our player again. A lot of testing back and forth. So we've got a rifle. It's working. I know it's not showing up. Like I said, I'll fix that. We can jump. We can crouch. All that's good. So we hit the one key and it changes back. And we have our normal controls all over again. We can pivot around and get all dizzy and stuff, right? So let's see why our visibility crap is screwing up on a rifle again. Um, Setting our visibility to not visible, that's fine. And then when we hit the number one key, it's toggling the visibility again. But when we pick up the rifle, we are changing our camera, our animation, we're changing our controller yaw, and we're setting visibility um, to true. And that should be correct. However, it is not doing so. All right, so 
it's all fine. Everything is working great right now. But the setting the visibility is broken again on the rifle. And apparently I'm just missing something on this. Rifle picked up. We want to... I'm going to go ahead and take this um, toggle visibility off from right here. And we're actually going to go ahead and ignore the fact that we we picked up the rifle. So, rifle picked up, we're going to go ahead, since we've already dumped the spawn rifle, and now I'm going to go ahead and dump rifle picked up, and we're going to automatically start the game with the rifle. And we're going to utilize the, um, we're going to get rid of this as well. We're going to set Rifle Zero One Owned. Now, setting that to true, we have to look at, we got Rifle Picked Up and Spawn Rifle. Those two are Let's actually let's go ahead and take out that variable and yeah I'm gonna leave this temporarily out because we're just gonna totally revamp this whole weapon system so that we can do it the way we've got it right now with spawning it in and out because we try to play it right now it's gonna tell the game that we, we have it we're shooting, but we're not going to be in the animation. So, I'm actually going to go back to toggle the visibility again. We're going to toggle the visibility of the rifle. We're going to set it to. Um, No, we want to go ahead and set visibility. Let's try it this way again. Even though it wasn't working correctly before, we want to go ahead and just say, okay, you know what? Okay, the rifle is not shooting... now it is but we're not changing our animations we don't want that to be the case um, so if I take these two again and I'm just gonna break the link on it compile and save so when we start we do not we we have it visible Okay, so, yeah, I'm just totally screwing up everything tonight, aren't I? <laughs> so, with toggling the visibility to on, we're not doing the rifle picked up, which is what changes all this stuff here. So, what I'm wanting to do is, I only want the weapon to work whenever I hit the number one key. So, if I hit one, it just totally put it away. If I hit one again, it brings it back. So what we need to do now is, since this is working, to toggle the weapon back and forth. Whenever I, it's toggled to be visible, we need to go ahead and toggle visibility. 
set animation instance class to the regular unarmed. So we know this part of it works. And I don't really want to run a flip-flop. But let's try it with the flip-flop in place. Just to experiment with it. So when we hit it the first time, it's going to toggle it this way. And then what I want to do is grab this, control C, control V, and I'm going to go ahead and copy it all in here. So when I toggle it again, it's going to toggle the visibility one more time. It's going to, we're ignoring this, this variable right here. We're going to change the animation class to the rifle animation blueprint and use the controller y'all so technically speaking we have the rifle so when we hit one it totally goes away you son of a bitch and I hit it again and it works but now it's not shooting the pain and suffering I go through for you guys let's change rifle zero one owned to equipped so now with the rifle one equipped then let's switch these around and let's go to the rifle one here and let's go back to the conventional unarmed here so if rifle one is equipped then we're doing this in fact actually we're gonna have to change this around to using branch nodes I'm just gonna quit being stupid here and I'm gonna rewrite it from from scratch and what we're gonna do is run a branch node we we'll press it then we want to check to see if rifle zero one is equipped and again this is all going to change again later too so this is just again temporary just so we can have four different guns here or weapons here so if rifle one is equipped then from there we want to toggle the visibility of the rifle and then we want to set animation instance to the unarmed and then we want to show crosshair to faults so we get rid of that and we want to deactivate the ADS camera that is a lot of crap isn't it and we want to activate the follow camera so if we have the rifle equipped when we hit the number one key it's now going to toggle the visibility to make the rifle go away it's going to change my animation back to the unarmed animation it's going to turn off the crosshair turn off the aim down sight camera and turn on the follow camera wow that's a lot of crap so we can actually grab this control C and control V put another copy of it here so if we don't have it equipped then it will actually go ahead and equip it and set the visibility so we'll start going down the row here we're going to do the animation for rifle so if we don't have it equipped we want to equip it we want to show crosshair and we want to switch these two around so this one goes here and this one goes here
and we'll break that link break that link so now we've flipped our cameras around so we have deactivated the cameras got them switched around and I guarantee this is still gonna have a problem so we have the rifle equipped and now we've equipped the rifle and we've changed cameras the visibility is wrong still we, but we can crouch we're in the right animation blueprint we can't shoot yet Wow, I'm really interested for it. You're just sucking copious amounts of ass tonight. Um, so what we'll do is we'll come back into here. We're going to dump that guy. We're going to default it to rifle one equipped from the get-go. to fault actually so now we can come over here and we need to have something that's in the event tick that actually so we're ignoring these two guys so let's go ahead and make another custom event and this is going to be rifle check I hate going through all this crap just for um, a temporary setup, but um, let's run a branch node. And rifle one equipped. If rifle one is equipped, this is where we can go ahead and let's see if I can just copy this over here. Um, from this. If rifle one is equipped, we want to do all of this. Grab that, grab that, and that. Control C. So, what we're doing here besides getting absolutely annoyed is if we have the rifle equipped we're going to change the rifle animation blueprint we're going to deactivate the follow camera we're going to activate the ADS camera we're going to use the controller rotation yaw we're going to show the crosshair and we're going to go ahead and display the widget okay so from start we need to go ahead and do a compile and save and rifle check it needs to be linked in off of the event tick so it's always going to be checking this is absolutely not what you want to do this is going to be putting an unnecessary thing for it to check every second of the time you're playing the game but we're just troubleshooting some stuff so with the rifle check enabled um, if the rifle is equipped it's going to do these things it's going to be checking if rifle equipped is false then we're right back into the same thing right here on the, the primary weapon switch which was all of this guy right here it's redundant but something is just not clicking All right, don't be an ass. I don't want you to read C++ single. So, in theory, the rifle check is going to check to see if rifle one is equipped. And if rifle one is equipped, we're going to do this. If it's not, then we're going to do that. Um, so we can actually come over here and... I'm going to delete these guys right here. Since we built that into the rifle check, it all goes through, and that's lovely. So, 
we might actually be able to run the rifle check from here instead of from the event tick as well so it's going to check to see if we have the rifle and if so we need it to actually no we don't want to put that there we want to get um, something a little bit different we want to create another variable and if rifle equipped we want to equip so let's actually create another variable um, rifle zero one um, equip do a little bit different so if we're here it's gonna be no we're setting that to false so on the rifle check it says okay um, no we don't have it so we're gonna not display it and we're going to go this way and again We'll set it here, but set that to true. Isn't this so much fun? All right, so what we've done is we have the rifle check. Yeah, this this will make you pull your hair out sometimes. Um, because what should be simple becomes complicated. So we're going to start off with the rifle. And I'll... I'll go into the map and let's go ahead and do a compile and save real quick so we don't have a whole hell of a lot of confusion let's go ahead and grab these guys and throw that in the pickups folder we want to get rid of him and go into the pickups folder and I'm gonna remove the rifles from there so there won't be any guns spawned on the map right now at all you're going to spawn initially with one. I'm going to leave the pain pad just for now and again do a save all. And let's review what we've got. And technically speaking, it works right now with the, the, the version I, I posted yesterday. Um, it's just that right now we want to make it a little bit better. We want to re refine a few more things. Um, we don't need rifle equipped right now. I'm going to take that back off. Rifle check is on event tick. We may or may not need that right now. I'm actually going to dump both of those guys. And I'm just going to get rid of these two right here as well. Just because I want to get rid of some confusion. And this is still going to stay. This is our primary fire. That's shooting. Um, but what we need to confirm though is okay that's all working rifle one equipped that's fine you can fire the weapon that's fine this should all be okay so we're gonna leave that alone for now so in our rifle check system what we're doing is we're checking to see if the rifle is equipped and I guess we could have left the rifle equipped to whatever, but I'm going to go ahead and compile and save. I want to see what it looks like on the map. When we initially spawn in, we spawn in, and you notice what it's doing here is it's enabling and disabling it all at the same time. So we need to fix that issue. with it flickering like that oh, we don't have anything on that button at all we took everything off of hitting the number one key so we're gonna go back in here and set rifle equipped to false right off the bat and from here 
we can actually let's run a flip-flop and from that flip-flop let's go ahead and just say the hell with it and rifle equipped we're gonna set it and set it so hitting it one way is going to equip it hitting the other way is going to unequip it and this in theory like I said a few times before should start you off with no rifle equipped and it does because it's being an asshole and this is wrong so now if I hit one it does just the opposite <laughs> it despawns the rifle and allows it to start shooting hit it again and you see it's flickering because it's it's rapidly trying to enable and disable so lovely we're contradicting it somewhere we're doing the rifle check and I'm gonna go ahead and dump that off the event tick and see what happens alright it starts us in this mode but the rifle is displayed so we hit the number one key and nothing happens the animations broken and he just died Wow, I just totally fucking killed everything. <laughs> and managed to kill myself in the process. I think I deserve a, a big round of applause for that. Seriously, how do you fuck that up? <laughs> but I can still move. <laughs> oh, God. I could fuck up a brand new crowbar. Rifle 1 is equipped. Let's start it off with yes. Okay. It's equipped from the get-go. And... Setting the animations. Okay, so the rifle check it's just checking to see if we have it equipped if the answer is yes nowhere in here do we tell it to activate or deactivate or set the visibility of the gun itself so that's an issue again Lexmark this is all your problem this is your fault you made me do this so I'm gonna go ahead and grab these guys and this guy drag them over here and I need to set visibility so if it's true we need to set the visibility to that and if it's false we need to undo it so let's try this and let's see if we can not kill myself and now I'm shooting Well, that disabled it, but it didn't get rid of the gun. Rifle check. Rifle equipped, rifle equipped. That's working. And I'm going to go ahead and put... Um, rifle check back in here just again 
just to see if that makes anything different. Alright, so I don't have the crosshair up, but I'm shooting. Everything is, is copacetic with that. So I need to do the crosshair part. See what happens when we hit number one. Not a damn thing. Alright, so I've just wasted all this time trying to fix something that, you know, has absolutely gone backwards. Everything was working just lovely. So... Why is this being such a pain in the ass? I'm trying to be too complicated on everything so that I can switch weapons back and forth. And if I can't even get this to work correctly, then... What the hell? Show crosshair is working. That's fine. Rifle equipped. That should be good. So it checks to see if you've got the rifle equipped. A rifle check. Yeah, it's checking to see if you've got the rifle equipped. If you do have the rifle equipped, then it sets the visibility to true on the rifle. And again, rifle equipped is set to true here. I mean, if I set this to uncheck this, it should start you off as false on the rifle check. So if it's false, then it's going to make sure that the visibility is not there. When we're using toggle visibility, it was working, but this should work also. So if I don't have the rifle equipped, and it's going to check that right off the bat and off of begin play um, it, I should not need rifle check on begin play because it's on event tick it's setting the visibility to faults of the rifle it is yeah I am totally totally blaming you for this one as well we have set visibility and set visibility and then here we have toggle visibility Lexmark, that is totally you screwing me up. So we told it to set the visibility, and then we told it to toggle back. Really? See you, Red Wings. Okay, so that's working now. So if I hit one again, it's disabling the weapon, and it's removing it, but it is not changing our freaking animations. Rifle equipped, it's false. Again, I'm blaming you. As I said to the polygon animation, remove the crosshair and change the cameras. <laughs> you're at a fault for everything so okay we're starting off and we're in first person view why are we in first person view why is the camera not correct gun doesn't work that's good I hit the number one key and now everything is working yeah you see that motion blur when you fire I didn't see that before interesting okay so if I hit one again it's just not changing the cameras and not getting rid of the, the crosshair it's still got the um the yaws there I cannot shoot the crosshairs there I hit one again and I'm, I'm working with the gun and I know the aim space isn't there yet so the gun's not going to move with where you're pointing but it's shooting where you're aiming so I'm aiming right here at the hub on this it's going to go there there is bullet drop, so you're going to have that to deal with. Because, you know, it's a musket. You're not going to want to shoot razor uh, flat or a laser flat. So this is almost working. The rifle is disabled, but the view is still screwed. 
So, how attached are you guys to first person view for shooting the damn gun? The visibility of the rifle is working. Animation part is working. Let's actually remove the camera stuff. So we're not going to change cameras. We're going to just go from there. And I'm going to leave this wide ass open like this. So we're just going to test it. No camera changing. So there, we're in our normal third person view. No weapon equipped. We can't shoot. Hit number one key. And well, the crosshair shows up, but it's right there inside of our, our body. The gun works. And it's still based off of the um, our shooting. We're just not going to be able to see what we're doing when we're shooting. And because I've got it set to operate off of a certain camera, the projectile spawner is right there based off of the ADS camera. If we're not using the ADS camera, then it's just not going to work. You know, it's not going to aim correctly. That's why the aiming is off right now because we're not using the ADS camera. So it was having some issues with changing the, the views back and forth. So that's why I went ahead and removed the camera stuff from right there. So we know that this part works. It changes the animations. The crosshair portion is working. And everything else seems to be working just fine now. So what we're going to have to do is, since it works, we're in third person view, we can walk around, everything's good to go. We hit the number one key to toggle. We get our rifle, and we can shoot. That's all fine. We hit it again. We get rid of the rifle, and we can no longer shoot. But it's still showing the crosshair, which I'll figure that out too. So, um, with that, we we can toggle our weapon correctly right now, and the shooting ability of it. That's fine. The camera thing is gonna have to be taken care of. It's just one of those things where we're going to have to cycle the cameras. I, I want to avoid... Cause some people don't like the third-person view, but or the first-person view. But if you guys got any suggestions on how you want the, um, the camera to look and the crosshairs to work, because the crosshair is going to be essentially tied into the center of the screen, no matter what. And if we're sitting here looking directly at the center of the screen, it's going to be in the, in the center of the screen, right there in the middle of his, his chest. So if we go to try to aim, then when we equip our rifle, we can't see where we're aiming. So, you got any thoughts on this, guys? Because I know that the changing the camera is... It was working before and by having it in first person view then we were able to aim just fine and shoot just fine so I'll change it back in here and you can see it's, it's fine I'm back into regular unarmed animation so that's it's working good enough so if we want to change over to a sword or a pistol or whatever else we can go ahead and finish off our our systems but the thing is, I would like this fixed. I can actually come back and fix this off camera if you guys don't mind that, but um, I think we should go back to the the first person camera when you're equipping the rifle to shoot. So, that's just my thoughts on it. 
Because all this is, is working normal. The crosshair, everything is working like it should. So, for now, let's try, and now you ask Clown, highlight all of it. I'm going to go ahead and put the camera stuff back in again and see how that works. So if the rifle is equipped, then we're going to set the visibility. No, we're going to deactivate. You leave it down to your legs. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, so um, when we're setting this to true, so we're equipping the rifle, we want to deactivate the follow camera. And we want to activate the ADS camera. So by doing that here, it may work a little bit smoother. So we're doing pretty much the same thing here on control C, control V, link it in. And do that. Because I'm just one of those weirdos that has to have everything neatly organized and placed. So now I need to set the follow camera to here because we're doing the reverse and you know what because I'm real engine 4 I know we're going to take the follow camera and we're going to stick it in here because if I just try to do copy and paste I know that it's not going to work I've had that happen before where you copy and paste something in it just doesn't detect correctly so yeah So we don't want the rifle equipped. We want to deactivate the um, the ADS camera and activate the follow camera. So let's see how well that works. All right, so we don't have a gun. We're good. We're walking around. We're in this mode. Everything is awesome. We got number one key. We now have a rifle. We can aim. It shoots where we want. Hit one again, and it hates me because I didn't get rid of the crosshair. But hey, that's that's a minor thing. That's a minor thing. Even though, even though, yeah, I'm gonna blame you again. How did that get checked? I remember unchecking that. <laughs> Do you think Star Wars pirates would be good then? Like stormtroopers um, swinging from ship to ship. <laughs> All right, one more test, and then we can move on here. So we see everything is working lovely. We're good. We hit number one key. We now have a rifle. And where the fuck is my crosshair? <laughs> uh If rifle equipped is false, show the crosshair is false. Show crosshair is true. We don't even need this here. Um, because it's just going to go right to showing the crosshair. But show crosshair, we do need to disable that only whenever we don't want it. We don't need the can use it right there. Maybe it was just getting confused. But why is it being bass backwards here? I swear, Unreal Engine 4 has been haunting me all day long. Everything that I want to try to do that's very simple. Look, we have a crosshair. It works. Hit it one. Hey, no crosshair. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Uh, 
Well, I would hope so, man. You're missing out. I'm, I'm always doing something kind of stupid. Okay. We got this. This works. Now let's, let's try to break something else. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure I do a good, clean save all. Save selected. I'm closing player base for just a moment. I'm going to save the map. I'm actually going to go back to the main menu map and I'm going to play this in standalone mode so that we can look at it from the perspective of a player coming into the game fresh. So, that being said, I am going to play in standalone game. And I'll try to make it a little bit bigger so you can see it better. You'll see what I see when I'm actually playing the game, but when you play it, it actually goes full screen, by the way. It's an automatic thing. It automatically goes to full screen. So, and it's not giving me the thing to scale the, the window. Well, okay, it's big enough. You, you guys can see it okay, right? So, the main menu. We still got that cool, awesome music. We got um, our... And remember, guys, this is a Steam-based game. So you're going to need to have Steam running in the background. Um, that's just the way I've got the multiplayer set up so that it works for whatever I actually get to do, um, published on Steam. So it'll show your Steam username and your Steam avatar right here in the upper right-hand corner automatically on its own. And if you want to, you can go to Multiplayer. Again, if you're trying to find a game, you would just go to Find. And wait just a second, hit Find Lobby, and it'll check to see if there's anything available. If there is, it'll show it here, and there'll be a Join button. You can go right in. For this situation, I'm going to go ahead and say Host Game. Now, if I hit Single Player, it's just going to go right into the map, and nobody will be able to join. But I'm going to create a server, and I'm going to say this is my damn server. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit Make. It'll create the game, and now if anybody was trying to join, they would be able to. So here we go. Walk around. Everything is awesome. Oh, I want to shoot these bad guys over here. Bang. There we go. And the, the click is to simulate the fact that you're trying to fire too fast. And the reason why I like the, um, the bullet drop is if I'm trying to shoot somebody that's on that ship, you're going to have to arc your shot pretty good. But if I'm trying to shoot somebody way over there on that island, the bullet's going to disappear before it gets that far. It, it would not have the, the, the power to kill somebody at that distance anyway. But let's see if we can shoot ourselves again. Absolutely. We can kill ourselves. So, <laughs> I'll work on, on, on that and the respawn system. Because I have to make it where we can't shoot ourselves and commit suicide. Because that's just dumb. But, I can get a health potion. We know the health potions work, and we know the health regen works. Um, for right now, I'm not going to incorporate actual death and respawn, if I can help it. Um, so that when we're playing in multiplayer for testing porpoises only, like playing around with Flipper, um, we'll be able to um, just keep on playing. I just want to see that, you know, the bullets are doing damage and that kind of stuff. And eventually I should work on a respawn for the med kits as well. Because once they're gone, they're gone. But, then again, you know, go back to the main menu and exit game. So everything is functional right now. Everything that's in a game is functional except for the fact that you can shoot yourself and kill yourself. So, minor inconvenience of <clears throat> accidental suicide. And the death animations and that stuff is not all the way set up. <laughs> so, little bugs here and there. That's to be expected. But you're talking about, what, three and a half, four hours worth of labor so far to make the game to where it is. So I'm going to go back to the map that we're on. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new map. The Whenever I, I actually package it... The, a new map is not going to be there, so create a new map, and we're going to run VR Basic. I'm going to leave everything in here for right now. I want to make sure that I go into Game Mode Override, set it back to third-person game mode, and 
I want to go ahead and play in selected viewport. So, yeah, at least this gives us something with some physics. So later on, we want to test to see if our weapons like this are actually affecting physics. Then we can, and I think that's pretty freaking cool. So I think we're good so far. Let's um. Interesting way for that to land, but having a test map is something we can use for testing our weapons with until we actually get a, a target dummy built. So what I'll do is we'll leave it like this, but I'm going to go through a few things to show you what's coming up next. So what will be coming up soon is I will have swimming so that you'll be able to swim from island to island instead of actually just walking underwater. So I do have the animation. It's not the greatest in the world, but it'll do. And if you stop swimming, then naturally you can tread water. All right, so those two will work. They're fine. And sword attacks. Right now it's going to show that I have the rifle in my hand only because I have it attached to the uh, as a preview asset. But if I wanted to go ahead and add in swords, I have four sword attacks already in here, ready to go. And it's not going to be that hard to do, but using the method we just did for the guns, I'm going to have to do the same thing whenever I enable or d and disable, that kind of stuff. I'm going to have to do the same thing with doing a series of checks. If the rifle is equipped and I want to draw my secondary weapon, and I'm going to go through the weapons here in just a second. Um, if I want to draw my pistol out, but I have my rifle out, then what's going to have to happen is it's going to have to say the same thing as, no, I don't have my rifle out. So it needs to put the rifle away, it then needs to pull the pistol out, and I'm going to have to set up the pistol animations. I don't have them configured yet, um, and I need to make another animation blueprint. But they are part of the animation starter pack, as well as death animations. That's why I chose to use it. And crouching does work right now. I just don't have crouching working when you're unarmed. But you do have, um, like, pistol, pistol reloading, drawing pistol. So you, you are going to have pistol stuff here. Like, um, prone, I'm not sure about yet. We'll negotiate prone. Because I'm going to have to create an animation blueprint for each part of it. But I do have... Um, shooting while prone, reloading while prone. I just don't have crawling while prone. So if you go prone, you can't move. So that's something I'm going to have to look at as well. Um, pistol, pistol, where's my is it, aim space? And I've got some other stuff that I can configure too. Like once I get the aim space working, you'll be able to see the angle of the gun as you're moving it around. For right now, I think the crosshair is just good enough. But, you know... We'll work one thing at a time. So there, there's our um, one. I have much better pistol animation set that I want to incorporate later. Oh, I've got some lovely animations that I'm going to be bringing in. Not just this animation stuff right here. So that's just the animations that I have ready. Um, let's look at weapons. Because weapons are cool. To go down the list of the weapons, I know they're going to be hard to see here, but I'll, I'll make them go full screen. We have the axe. Nice little battle axe. It's, um, I think it's pretty cool. We've I'm not going to show all of them, because you know, there's a lot in here. But I'll make quite a bit of them actually work. We have a blunderbuss. Now this would be the shotgun. So whenever it fires, it's going to shoot multiple projectiles out like a shotgun, but have a really short range. So that's pretty cool. Um, swords, got a bunch. But we also have a spear. I'm not sure how I'm going to set up the spear for animations yet. But it's there in case I decide to use it. Oh, so many swords. Um, I'll look at this one and one other sword. Um... This is the typical pirate cutlass sword you think of whenever you see a pirate game. So I, I think I'll definitely use one like this. 
just because maybe this version here with the gold or the brass handle I think that would be pretty good and then you've got um, a dagger that might end up in the game eventually maybe for a special attack you walk over and stab somebody in the back or something um, you've got a double barrel musket pistol so you have a two shot pistol there's a, a double barrel um, rifle as well and yes it is a rifle not a shotgun so you can actually use a double barrel rifle and get two quick shots off bang bang and then you have your, your pause and your reload so that'll be pretty cool um, uh, more swords and I have the perfect sword for Lexmark all wood wooden sword that's all you get Lex you don't get a good sword um, <laughs> I'll make it something in here that automatically detects your account and only gives you a wooden sword but yeah I'm just kidding um, we've even got a little pocket pistol so those are the main guns and stuff for the next stream what I'll do is I'll I'll activate um, one of the pistols probably I'm thinking this one just for the giggles of it so you have two shots so you pull your pistol out bang bang and then you have a pause and then it'll be more challenging for me to try to figure out how to um, <laughs> to figure out how to uh, set it up to get two shots and then a reload I mean it would be easier if I just do like this one right here or which I like that one but it, I think this one's cool as well there's so many different guns that are in here that fit the pirate theme but uh, I mean you've got a, um, a boot pistol so I'll set up one rifle, one pistol, one sword, and I mentioned grenades earlier. And yes, and the, oh well, yes, and plus we have cannons. We have four different kinds of cannons. And I'm going to come up with a way, I, I can already make them fire, that's easy. I can make a cannon shoot. And I can make it where you walk over and you stand next to it and hit the F key and it fires the cannon. So that's easy enough to do. But what I want to do is be able to, um, yes, there will be an options menu. I just haven't put one in just yet. Um, uh, there shouldn't be any motion blur. Um, if I knew where ocean motion blur was, I would make sure it was disabled. Um, but as far as I know, I don't know of where you can actually go in here and disable that. I don't like motion blur. But yeah, with the cannons, I want to be able to make it to where you can move it left and right to change the angle. Unfortunately, the way these cannons are designed, you can't tilt them up and down, so that's not something I can I can do. But we have cannonballs. But we also have... Well, let's see here. Of course, you know, there's plenty of ships. You saw those are on the map. Um, Items-wise. Oh, where, where would I find the motion blur? So, here's the, the little bomb, which can be used for a grenade. And I've done grenade effects. Yeah, I don't like uh, motion blur either. So if you tell me where I can find it to disable it, I will make sure it's disabled. So we have that we can use for a grenade. We've got um, gems as part of the money system. You find a gem, and eh, whatever, you can take it and sell the gem to a vendor. Uh, you got coins, singles, stacks, all kind of stuff like that. So you'll be able to find loot laying around the map, which is kind of cool too. Um, there's another bomb there. So, unless oh, the bomb attachment, this is the actual bomb. Well, you find the tutorial, let me know, and tell me what it is. It should be, it should be either an easy setting to find or something. And I'll look real quick here in just a second. I just want to cover some of the weapons that'll be in here. So, yeah, there's our grenade. 
I got more stuff that I could use for potions, um, the chalice, three different gems. Um, yeah, all kind of cool stuff. So there's lots of items that I'm going to bring in. And this is, this is just for the pirate version. So, I mean, once we get into the, um, the other versions, they're going to be pretty well in depth. Well, let's look at the characters that I've got. The working characters. Right now, I can change to any of these characters that I want. Um, in fact, to make it a little bit easier, I could probably go into um, the player character and show it that way. Go into... Where the hell is my player? Right here. So, we're in the viewport. A lot of the really big cameras took into our dude's head. Um, if you look at the mesh. Any of the characters that are from this asset pack right now I can change to. So if we want to be English Captain with the hat. Um, if you want to be English Governor. You want to be a soldier. Now I can also change the 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 colors as well. I can change him to the wrong one. Um, I could change him to and see that's probably one. A that's the blue. I should be able to change it to that. It's kind of compile shaders. But we can change colors on some of their, their clothing as well just by changing these. So I'm actually gonna go back to yeah, I don't want to sit here and let it compile shaders. Not while I'm, I'm broadcasting, but... Um, you want to be a female pirate? No problem. We'll work on the character selection menu also, so you can actually pick which ones of these you want to be. You want to be a winch? No problem. The gentleman, that's the one we've been using. Maybe the governor's daughter running around in a dress. That's awesome, too. How about Blackbeard? There you go. Got a hook for a hand. Got another pirate captain there. Kind of like a weird Barbosa. Uh, pirate deckhand. First mate. This is the one that I normally use, but I just kind of stuck with the uh, the gent. Pirate seaman. And of course, you got to have skeletons. So, for giggles for right now. So yes, you can walk around and be a skeleton if you want to. Yeehaw! So when I do set up the character selection screen, you'll be able to pick out which one you want to be. And I still see another bug here. All right, so I'm gonna fix that bug real quick. But with the character selection screen, then you'll be able to go through your different characters and, and be whatever you want. And I believe we were set up as the gentleman. Compile and save. And let's look at the event graph because we had one other little small problem there. And that problem was that I was noticing here. So as we're running around, everything is great. And I can pan around. So I hit one. It's shooting just fine. Yeah, I can, uh, for some cooperative stuff and just for general mayhem, I can put some animated skeletons that are walking around. Fall over. There. So this is like a good shooting range as well, too. And I will have stuff like shooting ranges and things of that nature. But when I go back... Notice whenever I'm panning around, I forgot to do this. Control C. I'm going to take you guys, move you out, uncheck you, so I can actually still pan around and look. I like being able to swivel around and look at my own character and that kind of stuff. Which is part of the reason why I like the third person character view for just general navigation. So there we go. Everything is good. I can zoom around like this. 
hit one, and now we can shoot, and everything's great. Now whenever I go back, I can pan around again. So, all right, fixed. Now, what about this motion blur? I'm gonna go ahead and minimize all this stuff, and get ready, because as soon as I end this video, I'm gonna go ahead and package it. It takes me about 10 minutes to package, and I can have a link up for people to download and, and try it out. So I'm going to look right here. First thing I'm going to do is save all. And we're going to call this just our test map. So again, we're going to save all, save current. You know, what I figure I'll do is I'll give um, skeletons um, a sword and let them attack. I've got some, some stuff I can use for that. Project settings. So where might that be? So we know that um, description's fine. That's fine. Game instance. Um, there's no movies. Packaging should be good to go. Um, target hardware should be fine. Audio. AI systems, animation. I don't know. Do you have a clue on, on where that could be? I've never had any problems with motion blur in this. But um, if there's an option in here, I would be glad to set that up automatically. And, or set up an option in a options menu so that motion blur can, can be disabled. Rendering. Um, texture streaming is on. Would imagine it would be within the rendering or renderings overrides. Um, translucency is set by distance. Static lighting. Um, bloom, ambient occlusion, motion blur. Right there. See? Told you it couldn't be that hard to find, right? So that's turned off in rendering. And let's go ahead and exit that. And I'm going to go ahead and play in standalone one more time. And let's see how it looks. See if there's any difference on my end. Um, play in standalone game. So let's just pop up there and we'll give it a quick test. And I'll be ready to, to drop this live stream. I will package this up. You know, the packaging is only going to take uh, a minute or so, you know, a couple minutes, but then it'll take around 10 minutes to be able to get it uploaded. All right, so again, we've, I've shown how to go into it in multiplayer, so I'm just going to go into it in single player. It's the same thing. It's going to go into the same map. It's just, oop, there we go. Um, Yay, you can walk all the way out here, and yay. All right, so that's good. Um, there should be no motion blur. So I'll fix the water next time. I want to do a little bit more research to make sure I get it right, because I'm also going to work on the water volumes and post-processing and all that stuff, too. Change to our weapon. Weapon works. Change back. Everything works. So what I want to do is one problem that I see in a lot of games, and I'm just going to go ahead and exit this, go to the main menu and exit game, is, and again, go back into the map. I need to do something with these maps. The problem that I see is when you're in the ships and you dip below the water line, it's like this boat right here is fine. The water's not going through it. Well, there you go. See how the water is coming through the model itself? Um, it's not a problem like on this ship right here because you can't go below deck. 
And that's, you know, I mean, I'd love to be able to go below deck on these ships, but there's nothing down here. There's nothing in them. So it's not going to be a big issue, but what I would like to do eventually is make these rafts work so you can get into a raft and drive around in them. But um, can also set it up to where uh, you got a captain that can take control and steer the ship. That one I'm going to have to experiment with because I've never done that before um, to see if I can actually make a drivable boat. If that's the case, then I definitely will do it because I want you to be able to hop in one of these ships and drive it around. Even if it's this little one right here and that kind of stuff, make the sails come out because if you look, this one the sails put away and all these ships they are away, but like that one the sails are out. And I have multiple ways so if you're looking at the um, the ships the sails are separate I can actually make them show up or go away and the actual ships themselves like um, let's see where's the big one the big old ship it's um that's the medium hull but I actually have to attach the other stuff. Now these are like static, so they're going to be difficult to. You got to rig everything on them. So in movement, you're going to have to have them permanently attached. Because if you look at this ship, I've got the ship. I have the mast. I have the sail. These are all various different separate parts. Uh, yours was that little dinghy right over here, uh, right there. <laughs> hey, if I didn't like you, I wouldn't pick on you. Unless I just really didn't like you, then I'd really pick on you. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, oh, and by the way, yes. Oh, that poor shark didn't make it. But, just for giggles, I actually have fishies. And they do have animations, by the way. They only have one animation, so... Blow it up, that's all he does. He will just sit there and waggle his tail. Uh, same thing with the shark. He just got the, the one... That's all he does. So, if I were to add these sharks into the game, all they would do is, at best, I could make them navigate around the water. That's about it. But... Well, well, at least we have some fish and some sharks. Plenty of peoples to work with. Got three different types of skeletons, actually. Um, lots of items that I can incorporate. So when I start doing the credits, you'll be able to pick up gold coins. And um, I like to make it to where if someone's walking around with um, a satchel of gold coins, it shows up on their hip. They'll have, like, a like a pouch for your musket rounds and a flask and yeah, you know, there's a, just all kind of little things that I can add in here and again this is just a pirate one so when I start adding in the other stuff it's going to be even more the modern one I don't know if, if you guys had looked at um, the original Project Cog video um, that I did and that one was actually the I don't know why I went to the lobby map. Um, that one was actually a modern style shooter. I did not like using the... Um, there was an asset pack that I was using that handled all the weapons firing. I did not like it. So I went ahead and stopped using it. And I, that's why I'm creating my own. Um, well, right now, the, the pirate portion of the game I'm building only during live streams. I'm not doing any work behind the scenes on it. I'm just, everything that I'm doing on this part of the game is going to be visible for everybody else. I am going to start working on some other functions that may not be necessarily for this, but um, I'm going to tweak the multiplayer a little bit more. In fact, while I'm sitting here doing this, I'm going to go ahead and package this game. So, first thing I need to do is go to my previous version delete that play pirate I need to get rid of my old version of it
delete. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm off screen here. The joys of having three monitors. And I am deleting the RAR file. So now I can actually go in here and I'm going to go ahead and package it while we're sitting here covering a couple little other things. To package, I don't know if you guys have ever done that either, but the packaging that I do for this is a development build, so it's quick and easy. I'm going to go to Package Project, Windows 64-bit, and it does its thing. I'm going to select that, and there we go. It's packaging. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The packaging build that I do, it works as a standalone. Anybody can play it. That's no problem. The link for this version that we just finished up and got everything working on will be posted here in the public lobby in about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So, and it will not have the post processing, so I'll need you to check that for me. But for everybody else who's watching, um, feel free to check in my Discord channel in about 15 minutes or so, and we'll have a playable version of the game. And if I've got a couple people that want to jump in here and try it out with me, I may even do another live stream just with um, people playing live. And I do encourage you to get into my Discord channel and preferably get into voice channel too. We can talk back and forth and we can hear what's going on. Alright, so this is just about done packaging. But like I said, um, yeah, guys, if you want to get it, like I said, it will be ready here very soon. We'll see you, Lex. Have a good one. Thanks for stopping in. Thanks for watching the stream. We'll see you soon. So, I said packaging the project. You can see right here in the bottom where it's showing that. It's about as much fun as watching paint dry. Um, you can show the output log and it's the stuff that it's going through. You don't have to. It's just a lot of what it's actually packaging. But, again, it's just about as much fun as watching paint dry, waiting for it to finish. But it usually doesn't take more than a couple minutes to actually do it. Um, so far, no errors. Everything looks good. I mean, Steam API disabled. It better not be. I'll kick you in the nuts. Because it works whenever I play standalone. So what I'm actually going to go ahead and do, as soon as this finishes packaging, I'm going to go ahead and exit Unreal Engine 4, and I'm actually going to go navigate to the project on my hard drive. I keep saying Steam API is disabled in here, but... Mm, it wasn't a problem with yesterday's version, so... Hey, build successful. So once you're done, then so I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I am going to go ahead and I'm going to drag this over here so you can see what I'm doing here. Whenever you, you package it like that, it puts it into a folder called Windows No Editor. So what I usually do is I go ahead and open up that folder, grab this stuff, drag it out, drop it back into the root folder, and just move it there. And then I come back in, delete the Windows No Editor folder because it's empty now. And now, once you've got it extracted, all you've got to do is double-click there, run COG, and there we go. It's all full screen. I see my Steam avatar and username. That's awesome. I'm going to go ahead and... And I got... Yeah, everything is working. Everything is lovely. 62 frames per second. Got a multiplayer, host, whatever, and then I'm going to make it. Hey, how you doing there? Nice butt. Um... Yeah, that's it. Um, I'm in game, walking around, and this is the way it'll be whenever you you get it. And gun, gun shoots. Awesome. Gun goes away. Everything else lovely. Everything is the way it should be. I am almost happy. And yes, that red bar down there that is your your health bar. So okay, and get main menu, and. That's good. I'm going to go ahead and upload this, and we're good to go. So, 
uploading wise I've got Google Drive set up I'm gonna go ahead and go to Google Drive and I will upload that uh, the upload will be linked in my public channel and it'll be ready to download in probably less than 15 minutes because the RAR file that I'm creating is going to be called polypirate.rar, the same as the other one was named, but I just started compacting it right now, and it is now done. Okay, so drum roll, what is the file size? File size is a whole whopping 118 megabytes. So I'm going to go ahead and upload this, and it'll be ready. And um, add people on Steam. All you have to do is go to your friends thing and, and add add friend and put in your username. And if you saw um, in the video, mine is very predictable. It's people bark. So I'm going to stop the Steam now. Uh, Steam. I'm going to stop the stream now, and I'm going to go ahead and upload it. And I will be available in the public lobby of my Discord channel. And if you guys want to get together and play, come on, let's go. Let me know, and we'll do a quick test and see how it runs. All right, guys, we'll see you soon, and I'm going to go ahead and shut this puppy down.